Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with more ink smushing mixed media type card. <laughs> this time using the more intense colors that I had sitting out for the previous card and then I went and did the light soft colors, but I couldn't get these colors out of my head so I had to use them. These are uh, Taffy, Ocean, and Royal from Simon Says Stamp. This is one of these are all of their positively saturated inks. And I've been really enjoying ink smushing with them, just experimenting. So I smushed those inks onto my craft mat, sprayed water, and then I'm pressing some Canson XL watercolor paper into them and then just drying in between all these layers. So you get all the splotches and texture and color and just, it's fun. It gets messy. I get ink absolutely all over me, but the amount I wash my hands and everything, and especially with these inks, by the end of the day, it's all gone anyway. But for a little bit, yeah, my hands are like purple and pink and blue. <laughs> if that kind of stuff bothers you, you can totally wear gloves. I see people do that a lot. I never really bother. I think about it always after the fact. But anyway, so I do all the layers and the smushing and I've kept these colors very similar. Just like the last card I did, you know, the light colors, but I did, you know, a green, a yellow and a blue. This time it's a pink, a purple and a kind of, or a pink, a blue, and then kind of an aqua blue. And that just means that these colors won't turn to mud. You know, you won't get that brownie grayish sludge when they mix. So I just kept adding layers. I wanted this really, really deep, really intense color because I wanted to do a galaxy background. Haven't done one of these in a while. And this is actually one of the easiest ways to do it is ink smushing. And then to intensify it a bit, I took some black soot distress ink and I'm just blending it on the edges. I've done a bunch of galaxy backgrounds in videos over the years. A lot of them I do more like watercolor and it always scares people because they're like, you just ruined it. But this is, like I said, this is one of the easiest ways to do it. I pulled out my glass media mat. I haven't used this in a while, usually because my lights, like in my previous office space the lights would just glare on it and it would give me a headache um in my garage office space this seems to be working better other than my camera is attached to my desk my desk is shimmed because the floor is uneven so it makes everything shake <laughs> so anyway anyway i covered all those edges with that black soot you know and it just gave it that extra something and then normally i would go in here with white splatter because that's just you know habit but I decided to do silver. So I used my Zig uh, silver liquid, but again, you could do white. That would look just as fabulous, if not more fabulous, really. But I've got this sitting here, why not use it? So shook it up really well, used my fan brush, splattered this heavily over the background. And as always, you could leave it here. Like most galaxy backgrounds, this is it. This is, you know, it looks fabulous. The minute you add the splatter, it just makes everything come together. And it's like, oh, this looks like this fabulous galaxy sky, etc. However, I wanted to add more. So I'm using the scattered stars stencil. And I pulled out some of my Glacier Nouveau paste. Again, I've done videos on these. Um, I love these. This is what I call faux foiling because when these dry, they kind of look, they give you that sort of foiled look. So it is a great way for people that just do not want to get into foil or, you know, like all the different things. This is a great alternative. Um, I highly recommend getting, if you don't have some, some press and seal, especially if you're going to get glacier paste. Um, these pastes will dry out very quickly. However, I have press and seal on all of my jars of this. None of them dried out. And like this one was one of the first ones they released. And that was what, two plus years ago. I forget when these came out, but when I did my first video on them, I opened that jar. I have the press and seal on it. It's still going good. And it has been at least two years. So I spread that over my stencil, sealed my jar back up, background is dry. I cut down sentiments and that's actually what kind of inspired the card was the sentiments. And that's from the uh, reverse and back again sentiment strips from Simon. So I trimmed down 
like separated and trimmed down the sentiments I wanted to use for this card. So I trimmed those down with my paper trimmer and then I took my Memento tuxedo black marker and just went around all the edges to cover that exposed white edge of the cardstock. It just gives them that little, you know, extra finishing bit. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. But with these, since they're kind of like the focus of this card, it was worth a few extra seconds. And then the other thing I pulled out was the Night Sky Wafer Dye set that came out last year. Whenever. It's been out for a while. Anyway, I die cut the clouds from that set from Vellum. And I always, for, like, I was thinking, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to, like, figure out where I'm placing everything because, you know, you want to hide the adhesive from the vellum because it shows through. And then I was, like, stressing myself out over it. And then I remembered, I was like, wait a minute, I have a Xyron sticker maker work is done for me. So I ran the vellum clouds through the sticker maker. Before I remove the backing paper though, I tr I trace around the edges of the die cuts and it's hard to see on video because it's vellum, but I trace around those with just like a stylus. And it doesn't matter if I'm doing like shapes like this, like clouds or anything, even the basic rectangles or squares or whatever. Tracing around and pressing it down that it adheres any excess adhesive to that transfer paper. And then that way you don't have those sticky edges that can happen with the Xyron. So it makes life so much easier. And then I press really well, peel off the release paper, peel off those clouds. And since they're completely covered on the back with that adhesive, you don't see any of it. And it just came together when I applied them to this background. The clouds literally look like they're just floating there. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Sometimes things work out really, really well and other times not so much, but this time was one of the good ones. So I adhered those clouds onto the background and then the moon I had die cut from some silver glitter paper and that I'm going to pop up with a bit of Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it just gives it a little bit of dimension and, you know, not a ton of bulk. So trim down some little pieces, put that on the back, and then I'm going to pop that into place. And then for all of those sentiment strips that I created, I am going to back those with just regular scotch foam tape, which is thicker than the Big Mama. So those will pop up just a little bit more. So again, just dimension. Or as Laura Basson says, dimension is life. And no, I'm not going to sing it. I much prefer when she sings it. <laughs> My singing voice, I'm not even going there. Anyway, anyway, I backed all those uh, sentiments with that foam tape and then adhered those into place onto my card front just kind of staggering those here and there throughout the card so it says love you to the moon and back so once I got all of those adhered into place I had also die cut little stars using that same um, night sky wafer die set and I just die cut the little scraps of the silver glitter paper and then just adhered a couple um, over the clouds. I wasn't going to add a ton of embellishments. I know, I know, you know, more is more with me, but I've got like that silver splatter. I've got all those silver stars on the background, the clouds, the moon, you know, there, there's a lot going on. So then on the inside of the card, masked off where the score line is. And then I taped that scatter stars stencil into place again. And I'm using those same three positively saturated inks. So the taffy, the ocean and the royal but I'm not pressing my blending brush heavy into the ink pad. Like I'm just lightly tapping, lightly swishing the ink pad and also brushing off excess ink onto just scrap paper because these are really intense colors and I don't want solid color on the inside of the card because it would be just too much going on. You wouldn't be able to write to the recipient over it. So just a nice light blend of those colors. It just kind of ties it all together, brings in those stars. I love this stencil so much. So I've got, you know, the colors going on and some of them blended together to bring in that purple, which I love. And then I'm going to add um, the remaining little sentiment to the inside of the card. And then I had a few more of those little tiny die cut stars with the silver glitter paper. So I adhered those as well, because why not, you know? And then the card front itself, I backed that whole panel with Simon's Big Mama foam tape. Again, just to give it that little bit of dimension. So backed it with the foam tape, peeled that off press this into place and then I paired it with a dull pink envelope and that finished off this card. So I'm going to like turn the flash on my phone to try and show just that like shimmer almost foil effect 
with that stencil and the glacier paste. Love. And if I remember when I'm doing my like post editing on YouTube, I'll try and link to other videos I've used using this paste and I'll do more videos coming because I ordered like the newer colors that had released in the last however long. Um, Cause yeah, it's fun to play with. And if, yeah, if you don't want to get into like adhesive and heat machines and all the million things that we love to use for foil, this stuff's great. And it's just pretty. And like I said, press and seal, need it. Comes in handy in the craft room, gotta have it. So all the links to all the things, as always, will be directly below the video, as well as a link to my blog post. I'll have the picture links in the blog post and the photos. So if you wanna check that out, it's all below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs up and commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.